Hey, Recruiter here. Some time back, I did a demonstration of a HireVue video interview for Target. Well, it's time to update that video. Keep watching. Darren D here. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Ramblin' Recruiter. I've been a recruiter in the Fortune 500 for nearly 20 years now. I've learned a thing or two about hiring and getting hired, and now I'm here to share what I know with you. I'm doing an actual demonstration of this hire view so you can take those answers and make them your own. If you're interviewing for specialty sales, store team member, or general merchandise, I guarantee you, you'll see at least some of these. This new character that I've created is only about a year out of high school, He's currently a nursing student at Community College and has worked summers as a golf caddy. I will only be giving answers that draw on actual life or work experiences that this individual could have had. All right, let's get into the higher view, shall we? All right, similar to last time, we're getting five video questions and one multiple choice. Congratulations. You have been selected for the next stage in our recruitment process, which is an online recorded video interview. This is your opportunity to showcase your talents and experience. For each question, describe a specific situation, what you did or would do, and the outcome or expected outcome of your actions. Remember to share any skills that would specifically benefit you in this job. It should take about 20 minutes. Our top tips, find a quiet place with minimal distractions. Complete the practice question. This way, you can adjust your screen and calm any nerves you may have. You will have two minutes to consider each question before responding. If you respond to the question and finish and there's still time on the clock, that's okay. Don't feel pressured to use the entire time. If you record and you don't like it, you left something out or it's not quite right, that's okay. You will have a chance to re-record it. Target will only see the final recording. We know that asking you to record an interview of yourself can be a little daunting. Take a deep breath, relax, and be yourself. We will now conduct the video interview. If you're looking for tips on how to present yourself, how to set up your background, how to set up lighting for a higher view video interview, I'll leave some links below in the description to other videos I've done. I'm not gonna cover that today. We're getting straight into the examples. Practice question time. The former CEO of HireVue said that doing the practice question is actually the best tip that he could give you. You'll be asked to respond to questions on video. You will be given three attempts to record your audio response. Explain why your background and experience would be a good fit for this job. So interesting. Okay, let's take a look at this. We've got a maximum of two retries. Our maximum response time is three minutes. And this countdown timer here is the prep time. It's giving me another 40 seconds to compose myself, compose my answer. If I wanna hide myself from the video view, I can click this button here. We still have another 30 seconds of prep time and you can see it's kind of showing you the outline here of where you should actually be sitting. The important thing to remember is actually look at your laptop or your computer's webcam. If you're doing it from a mobile phone and you're using the front facing camera, make sure you're not looking at yourself, that you're actually looking at the camera. All right, here we go. Hi, my name is Marco. I am a nursing student and a former golf caddy. And I think I would be a great fit for Target for a couple of reasons. Number one, I've always enjoyed uh, shopping there. I find that Target associates seem to really enjoy their jobs, to want to be there, to be engaged. And I think that's important. That's demonstrative of a good working environment and the kind of place where, you know, I think I could be a, a very strong contributor. But more than that, my experience as a nursing student, as a caddy, these things are all very customer centric. You know, God, as a caddy, you have to know when to keep your mouth shut and when to make suggestions or make conversation. You have to be able to carry a heavy bag all day in the heat, in the rain, and you have to just kind of either make yourself scarce or make yourself available depending on the customer that you're working with that particular day. And the trick is knowing what that particular customer actually wants of you without them having to tell you. So this is a very customer centric role and I believe that I've become a very good judge of people. Uh, I know 
how to listen to what people are saying and to what they're not saying and kind of pick up cues from that as to what it is that they want from me. As a nursing student, I do work clinical rotations in a hospital and spend a lot of time assisting the actual RNs and, and working as a patient sitter. And I can tell you that, especially when you're working as a patient sitter, if you're quiet and you let people talk, they will tell you exactly what they want what they need, really. It's, uh, it's a very rewarding experience for me to, to help somebody have a little bit better day, especially in the hospitals. When, when you're working in the emergency room, you are seeing a person uh, on what is literally the worst day of their life. So it's good to me, and it really fills me up to just kind of hear and interact with people and make their situation a little bit better. All right, so that's the practice question down. You hear the different things that I covered there. My experience in my summer job as a caddy, my experience as a nursing student. I covered off on customer centricity, which is, of course, very important to target. I talked about listening to people. These are the things they'll cue in on. We're going to start the interview now. There are six questions in this section. There are six questions for you to answer. Some of the questions will require you to record a response with video. You will be given three attempts to record your response. Each question will have its own time limit. Once you submit your answer, you cannot change it, and you will be taken to the next question. The last time I did this, Target did not ask any higher under pressure questions. In other words, you did not have a limited amount of time to prepare, nor did you not have the option to re-record if you weren't happy with your answer. Let's see if they've changed that. This question will be asked with a recording. You will be able to review the question text on the next screen when you answer. Tell us why you are interested in the position and describe your relevant knowledge and experiences. Again, two retries, prep time of two minutes. Let's jump right in. Hey, my name is Marco, and uh, I'm very interested in the position at Target because I've had a fair amount of experience working with people, and I think I've become a very good judge of how to understand what people need and want based on what they're saying and on what they're not saying. Uh, I've spent the last five summers working as a golf caddy for a, a large national golf course that if I said the name of, you would definitely know it. Uh, it's actually become pretty famous over the last number of years. And as a caddy, you have to be very knowledgeable about this sport, and you have to be either able to assist based on the golfer's skill level by making suggestions as to what club they should use, how they should play the hole, I might hit it over here if I were you, or I might hit it over there if I were you, or you have to know when is the right time to keep your mouth shut and not be a bother to somebody and not interject and make suggestions. And you oftentimes have to figure that out without any input from the customer. You just kind of have to gauge them and feel them out, get a sense of what their skill level is, and, and kind of go from there. Mostly you're there just to carry a bag, a heavy bag, all day, in the heat, in the rain, in whatever the weather conditions might be. Uh, it can be a very physically taxing job, especially if you do 36 holes in a day. You know, you might walk the golf course twice. That's about eight hours um, of carrying a heavy golf bag. But it's a great experience because I really do enjoy being there for somebody when they need the assistance, helping them, you know, make decisions and just helping them make their day a little bit better. In my role uh, as a nursing student, I do clinical rotations in a hospital in Jersey City, Christ Hospital. And I spend a lot of time as a patient sitter, basically just exactly that, babysitting a patient who cannot be left alone for any number of different reasons. And I find that uh, I, I no, have no trouble uh, striking up conversation with folks, whether that's something serious or if it's just a little bit of small talk. But I like to hear people, listen to what their issues are, and do what I can to help them resolve those issues. And I think those skills would be very valuable and beneficial to Target. I'm interested in the role because I know Target's a great place to work. The people I see there, they're happy, they're engaged, they're helpful. That's important. And uh, I think I would be a really good contributor and I have a pretty flexible schedule so I'd be able to work a fair number of hours. 
that question was very similar to the practice question, I'd say we nailed it. This question will again be asked with a recording. Describe how you learn and adjust when an experience does not turn out as expected. Describe a situation, your actions, and the outcome. This is a behavioral interview question asking for an answer in the star format. Now, as I'm only using the type of experiences that a 20-year-old, 19-year-old nursing student slash golf caddy would possess, it's going to be a little bit more tricky to answer. Yeah, I can definitely think of some examples, uh, particularly from my experience working as a golf caddy when things haven't quite turned out as, as I would hope that they would. Um, I mentioned it before that you have to kind of assess how involved you'll get in the game based on the customer, what they're looking for from you, and based on their experience level. Well, sometimes you, you may think, and I've thought, that a customer was at a certain level of experience, and it turns out that they weren't. There was one particular instance when I was caddying for um, some, let's just say, pretty wealthy individuals, you know, kind of VIP members of the club, and um, one of them, I was under the impression, based on his handicap, that uh, he was at a certain skill level. I made a suggestion to hit a certain shot using a certain club, uh, you know, a seven iron shot, the shot that I would have hit myself. And um, it, it turns out that that individual's uh, skill level wasn't quite uh, as high as that. And whereas I would have cleared the water hazard, he did not. Um, it cost him a stroke penalty, a lost ball. And uh, while it's against the club rules, I believe that the individuals involved were uh, wagering on the on the, the golf outing that day, so I think it cost him some money as well. Um, needless to say, he wasn't very pleased, um, had a few four-letter words for me, and, and my tip definitely suffered as a result of it. So, it, you know, it was kind of that day that I learned that you really have to bring it down to the customer's level. Yeah, I would have played that hole, and I would have hit that shot with a 7-iron, it wasn't the right move for that particular customer. Lesson learned, you know, assess from the customer's skill level. Meet people where they are. And, and I've had similar experiences as well um, in my, my role as a nursing student, um, particularly working in the emergency room at Christ Hospital. You know, when you're, you're in the emergency room, you get a lot of patients and family members who get a little bit upset that they've been waiting for a long time. They can get a little bit belligerent. And it's so tempting to just say to them, like, well, you know, the, the cut on your finger is really not that important. We just had somebody come in here who had a stroke. It's, it's, very, it's very tempting to respond to people who are being belligerent to you in that manner. But what, you know, the same lesson applies. Meet people where they are. Understand that that individual is having the worst day of his or her life. And it would be very helpful to... Just have a little bit of empathy and uh, a little bit of compassion and meet people where they are. So that's how I've adjusted to that. And, um, you know, it's an ongoing learning process. Tricky one there. Behavioral interview question with experiences that I, as this particular individual, wouldn't have really had before. Hopefully that answer hit the mark. Question number three will be asked with a recording. Here we go. How do you work with people who have different perspectives than your own? Describe a situation, your actions, and the outcome. It's very clear that Target is strongly focusing on individuals who have a mind for diversity and inclusion, accustomed to working with a lot of different types of people in a lot of different types of situations. So we had to know that a question like this was going to come up. This question was not on the higher view I did a couple of years ago. There are no, there's no lack of differences of perspective and opinion um, working in the emergency room at Christ Hospital. Uh, I work with all different types of individuals from all different works of, walks of life. There's just no lack of differing perspectives and differing opinions um, working in the emergency room of a place like Christ Hospital. The patient base uh, tends to be mostly minority. Um, many of whom 
are living in an underprivileged, under-resourced community. They don't have access to all the best health care in the world and sometimes don't have insurance. So in a lot of cases, they're treating the emergency room as if it's a primary care physician's office. Um, it, recently, I, I interacted with a patient, a Hispanic gentleman who came in to the emergency room with what turned out to be just out of control blood sugar, um, just uncontrolled diabetes. This individual was not managing their diabetes. Maybe he didn't even know that he had it. Uh, and he was quite ill when he came to the emergency room, but it was something we were able to get under control pretty quickly with some insulin. And um, I was sitting with this patient, you know, the nurse practitioner gave him a, a certain amount of insulin in his IV. And over time, he, you know, he felt much better and he wanted to go home. And uh, we wanted to keep him longer for observation to make sure that he was indeed well and that uh, he had something healthy to eat. So we actually got him a meal while he was in the emergency room. And, and he was very upset and wanted to leave, didn't understand why we were keeping him. It was a little bit difficult to communicate with him because I, I speak a little bit of Spanish but not, um, not fluent. But through a translator, I was able to, you know, get the point across that, like, yeah, you're feeling better now, but we need to make sure that you are, in fact, better, that you get some good food in you, and that we get you an appointment at a primary care physician so that you can, you know, get this diabetes under control. So he unfortunately had to wait, you know, a couple more hours to, uh, to meet with not only the nurse practitioner who was overseeing his care, but also a social worker to get him um, scheduled for an appointment. But uh, I think at the end of the day, he was pretty grateful that we did that for him, especially that we gave him something to eat. We didn't just, you know, kick him out on the street and say, OK, you're better now. Time to go. Um, that was an, a, something I think he appreciated. And uh, he did shake my hand on the way out the door. So it went well. That question was a lot trickier than I would have expected anything on this higher view to be. Target seems to be upping their game a little bit, really trying to focus in on a more specific type of individual than just any old live body that can fill the job. So that was tricky. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This interview would be very difficult if you don't have any background on behavioral interviews. If you can't think of any specific work experience that matches the question, go with other life experience. Interactions with siblings, interactions at school, athletics, academics, anything that you can use to fill that gap. I'm quite parched. Moving on to the next. Question number four. Describe how you have worked with another person to achieve a goal. Describe a situation, your actions, and the outcome. God, could you be any more general or broad? That, that to me, that's almost like a throwaway question there. When I'm working my clinical rotations in the hospital, I work very closely with registered nurses, the, you know, the actual charge nurses on the floor, whether that's on one of the floors or whether it's in the ER. You know, we have a goal, which is to, number one, make sure everything is safe. Number two, keep all of our patients, you know, on the proper medication schedule, basically to keep them alive, keep them on the proper medication schedule, treat their pain, you know, make sure that they're, they're having a, a better day than they were when they came in and that the outcome of their treatment is what we want to see, you know, that their symptoms are resolved or brought under control. They get a follow-up appointment outside of the hospital, whatever the case may be. Uh, and, and I can tell you, recently I was working on one of the med surge floors with um, a nurse who was relatively new. Um, she also didn't have a, a ton of experience, just a few years, and me as a student. So there was, you know, maybe a little bit of a lack of experience on the floor that day. And we were in a situation where we had a patient who was very, very, very vocal about being in a lot of pain. Um, who had had surgery, you know, the day before, or perhaps two days before. And uh, according to the orders that we had from the physician, they were maxed out on pain medication. We could not give her any more. She was very, very vocal. She was in a lot of pain. Um, it was causing a little bit of a disruption on the floor. And that's, that's one thing you don't want is, you know, you don't want a patient in a room screaming because number one, that makes all the other patients, you know, very uneasy. It makes the family members who are there visiting uneasy. Um, and what I was able to do is just sit with her, 
uh, spend some time talking with her, asking her questions about her children, about her grandchildren. You know, I let her show me some pictures. We chatted for a while. I told a few jokes. And I think just chatting helped get her mind off the pain. While I was doing that, the actual charge nurse was, you know, paging the doctor. And uh, she did come back with orders to increase the pain medication, which, um, is what the patient needed uh, to bring that pain level down to something that was a little bit more manageable. So we accomplished the goal of, you know, kind of keeping peace on the floor, making it a better experience for the patient and a, a good outcome clinically. And, and that's the important thing. And I, I look forward to uh, meeting the needs of Target's customers and making their day a little bit better than it was when they walked in the store. All right, I threw in a little bit of brown nosing at the end, but a little brown nosing never hurt anyone. Question number five, and this is the last one of these video questions. Imagine that you're on the sales floor and you see a guest who appears to need assistance. How do you proceed? This should be a good one. Yeah, I imagine that's um, that's you know kind of the basic crux to this uh, this job, right? Is to provide assistance to customers who need it. Um, I might observe them from afar just for a, a few seconds to to see if it really is that they need some sort of assistance, or if they're just you know texting somebody or whatever the case may be. And I would approach them, you know, kind of kind of gingerly. Nobody likes it when you're in a, a retail environment and, you know, one of the floor salespeople jumps right in your face and is like, hey, can I help you find something? You know, it's a little bit overbearing. But, you know, maybe from a little bit of a distance, maybe, you know, social distance, six feet away, I might say, are you finding everything that you're looking for or is there anything I can help you find? Do you need something? Uh, and, and then just kind of zip my lip and, and let the customer tell me what it is that they need. Um, there could be any thousand number of things that the customer may need assistance with, but my guess is in a store the size of Target, a lot of times it's just finding things. Where can I find mops? Where can I find uh, Windex? Whatever the case may be. Where can I find couch cushions? And for me, knowing where all those things are would be super important. Um, and just being able to walk them directly to where it is, not to just point and say, oh, it's down aisle 27. No, to actually walk them there and say, okay, let me show you where it is. That would be really important. Um, this, is, this is very much what I do, um, as both as a caddy and as a nursing student. Um, as a caddy, it's always about, you know, being ready with what the customer needs, okay? Mr. Jones is going to want to hit his sandwich here. Okay, here you go. Here's the sandwich, Mr. Jones. Um, Mrs. Jones hates the sandwich, always uses her pitching wedge instead. Okay, here you go. Here's your pitching wedge, Mrs. Jones. Just kind of observing, asking questions, and being prepared, not just with the answer, but with a demonstration of the answer. I think demonstrating the answer is absolutely the most important part. Yeah, that was a little tongue-in-cheek there because I'm demonstrating the answers for you. Positions in Target stores include guest services, product handling, essential functions, yeah, 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 walk up and down ladders, night shift, scan. Are you able to, pro to perform all these duties as required? Yes, of course I am. Your answers have been submitted. Please click the button above to continue. Thank you for expressing interest in joining the Target team. We know that every career decision is an important one, and we appreciate your time today. We will review your video and get back to you regarding next steps. The average timeline is within five business days, but we could contact you earlier. If you have any questions, please contact your store's human resource team. That's BS. Last time it took them over two weeks to respond to my hire review. They eventually did and invited me to come in. So there you have it. The 2022 update to Target's Higher View video interview. A lot of these questions were different. Frankly, it was a little bit more challenging than it was the first time I did this. Not only that, I did it with a candidate who had a lot less life experience to draw from. So yeah, it was a little bit trickier. My suggestion for anybody who's going to take this interview is to first learn and understand how to answer behavioral interview questions. Without that, I think it would be very difficult to do well in this interview. Once you get that 
that down pat, you can adapt those answers to fit the specific questions that are asked. If you're applying to Target, I wish you good luck. It is a good place to work for uh, people just getting started out or people looking for something different. If you want to learn a little bit more about the Hire View video interview process on the back end and what's happening after you know you click that submit button on those questions, check out the video over here. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe. I really appreciate that. That's the nicest thing you can do is subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Peace.